Hi, I'm Julie Morris with Calico Home, and I'm here at Curtis and Dallas's home following up on our last video series where we shared some of the tips and tricks of their do-it-yourselfer projects using Calico's fabrics and trimmings. We wanted to come back and share with you some of the tips that Curtis has for upholstering walls, and actually he's up in the dining room right now um, ready to share his secrets. The first step to upholstering a room after removing the nails and picture hooks from the walls is to apply batting to all your walls. I like to use a batting with about a half inch loft. That's going to keep your fabric taut without having to overstretch your fabric. And that's really important when you're pulling against freshly glued edges. Um, your batting, you're going to want to staple like an eighth of an inch from the crown molding and from the baseboard molding. And you're going to just staple sparingly. And the only time you're going to staple along the flat of the wall is where you're going to butt the two pieces of batting up to each other. And you don't need to staple a lot. Also, when you're going, taking your batting around an outside corner, you want to wrap your batting around the corner and staple against the adjoining wall. Then you're going to take your next piece of batting, but up against, not overlap, but up against the other piece of batting and start stapling there. What's that, what that is going to do is give you a nice, even, smooth edge. Your next step is to pattern match your fabric panels. You want to sew enough fabric panels together for each wall. You don't want to sew several walls together at one time and try to put them up because, you, because your pattern will go crooked because your walls are rarely square. Now, when you make each wall's width, you're going to want to leave enough enough fabric in order to pattern match to the next wall. Like for example this wall, when I brought this fabric over and started the second wall, I lost about 16 inches in order to pattern match the edge. Now with your fabric panels, you're going to take up to the crown molding and staple all the way up to the molding and all the way down to the baseboards as close as you can, just leaving enough room to cut between the baseboards and the staples to trim away the excess fabric. When you do a wall with a window like this one, you're still going to sew all of your fabric panels together. Um, this is one entire piece of fabric. You're going to staple the perimeter of the wall, just like you did the other walls, and that's going to cover the window. And then you're going to take your stapler, and you're going to staple right up against all the edges of the window molding, and then you're going to cut between the molding and the staples to expose the window. I think the trickiest part of upholstering room is your corners. Um, for an inside corner, what you're going to do is you're going to use your stapler to push the fabric into the corner and staple all the way down. The more stapling, the less wrinkles. And that's pretty much true for every edge except for your outside corners. For your outside corner, you're going to do the same thing that you did for the batting. You're going to take your fabric panel, wrap it around the corner, staple on the flat part of the wall. Then when you're starting your next wall, you're going to use that width that I told you about earlier and you're going to pattern match those two pieces. You're going to use hem tape to make a nice crease in that fabric and then you're going to use a thick fabric glue called Fabri-Tac to glue that fabric to that wall. That's pretty much how you upholster walls. Now you have to hide the staples. What I did for this room, for the vertical, for the inside corners and the sides of the windows and doors, I used strips of fabric that I cut up the bolt and for the tops and bottoms of the windows and doors I cut across the bolt. What that's going to allow you to do is pattern match your welting so that it blends well into your walls. Now for the crown molding I use a decorative braid. It's one solid piece that goes around the entire room just for something different. And what I did is I, for this part you might need an extra person because I glued using the same fabric tack that I used for the corner. I stood on one stool, held, glued, stepped onto the next stool, held, glued, and the Dallas would wrap the stool around and I would pretty much walk around the room that way. So that's pretty much how you upholster a room. Thank you, Curtis. That's a great idea actually using the decorative braid along the ceiling and Calico Corners has just hundreds of trims to choose from to make the space unique and to add that finishing touch. Okay, so next I want to show you how easy it is to use the hem tape that Curtis was referring to to create that nice crisp corner on the outside edges of the dining room walls. We've got a little chalk mark right here that shows the perfect pattern match. This is where it's going to meet the other fabric that's already up on the wall. So I'm going to fold it right along the chalk mark and then I'm going to use a steam iron to set that crease so that I know exactly where to place my hem tape. Okay, and I'm going to turn that to a dry iron now. I've got my crease so I know where I'm going. I'm going to lay down my hem tape, which is paper on one side and kind of gluey stuff on the other side. I'm going to lay it paper side up, right along the, the edge. And with the dry iron, because the moisture isn't going to help set that glue, so we're going to use a dry iron to apply the hem tape right along the edge. Okay, feels like it's on there pretty good. Now I'm going to go over to the paper, just remove that. 
and next I'm going to fold it right again along the fold line that we had created originally and run the iron. This is going to keep that fold pressed nicely and then when we're ready to put it up on the wall we're going to have a nice crisp edge. Okay, so now that we've learned how to do that crisp corner with the hem tape, I want to just show you how easy it is also to make the welting that Curtis was talking about. Now we know he suggested welting either along, you know, you could use that along the top side of the wall or along the bottom baseboard, which he didn't do. He used decorative trim on the top, but he did use welting in the corners and also around the, the window. So if you're doing a horizontal edge, you're going to obviously need for a larger space like the window to sew multiple widths of fabric together again to get enough welting. So you can see here we just seamed two pieces. This was all predetermined in terms of the pattern matching. So this is, you know, you lay the fabric up against the wall and make sure that your pattern match is correct. And then you cut your strips. This was sewn together so we have enough of a length here to show how you're going to make the welting. And then, of course, you need the welt. This is the raw cord and it just gets laid. We're going to sandwich it in between the fabric and then create the welting cord. So I'm just gonna fold it right over here. And you wanna make sure that there's a zipper foot on your machine so that you can get nice and close to the welting so that's nice and tight and it doesn't pucker. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide it under, under here. Put my presser foot down, find nice and close. And then we're gonna to wanna to reverse it to make sure the stitching doesn't come out. I'm gonna ride right along that welting. And you just use your fingers to guide it. And you're kind of pressing, you're gonna push the welting in as you sew and get nice and close. And that's as simple as that, really. So you're just gonna go along the length. And what you end up with, I won't do the whole thing, but you can see how nice that is. Then you're just gonna trim right along the stitching here to create your welt. And what's nice is when you get a nice close cut, um, that little seam allowance that you leave, which is probably a sixteenth of an inch, becomes a great, that's, that's what will stick into the corners. So when you put the glue in and you're pushing that into the corner, it kind of creates some texture there so the glue holds really nicely. So that's it on welting. It's pretty simple. Hey Chris, I was just showing around how easy it is to actually do those finishing details that you did with the hem tape on the corners and the welting. Um, yeah, I, upholstering I, walls in general is so much easier than you would think. I mean, it's much less messy than wallpaper. It seems that way, and there's so many benefits. So I hope that customers that are thinking about either painting or yeah, using or wallpaper would consider wall, you know, using you fabric it, on the walls. You can use it on, on paneling, wallpaper. If you want to cover old paneling, yeah. that's a great idea. Or sometimes you just have a lot of holes in the walls and things that you just want to cover up or, you know, old textured walls that you just... Exactly. And I was thinking, too, about just the fact when we were upstairs and your wonderful sound system and the fact that the upholstery walls really help with the acoustics as well. Definitely. So there's all kinds of reasons to do upholstery. Well, one more do-it-yourself tip for a do-it-yourselfer. And uh, this is Julie Morris with Calico Home. Thanks for watching.